How many times have you watched the Joe Rogan Experience? Depending on how you answered that, you'll know that there have been a very large amount of guests over the years who have covered a wide range of topics and themes. Uh, uh, military government organizations that are typically in the shadows. But while Rogan often tries to keep things lighthearted and fun, it's not hard to see things going off the rails considering who he brings on the show at times. You think that we... we you're we're almost losing America and there's a battle for America. Like I really feel way? that like just in it. or the topics he chooses to talk about as a result things can often get heated between the host and the guests and there are plenty of examples of this we'll break it down for you but before we do that go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us and with that being said let's get straight into the video. Do you want to win an iPhone 12? Maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winner will be announced at the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. Number eight, Ryan Redmond. Uh, yeah, I'm vaping a lot more, but yeah. How much cigarettes do you smoke a day? When you're the guest on a show like the Joe Rogan Experience, there are basic guidelines to follow. Aside from, don't be a jerk. Another is, don't try and make yourself the focus of the show. I think that was like 65 pounds or something, and I I, I just thought I looked like I had, had AIDS or something. Well, yeah. A great example of this was Brian Redman, whom fans of the show will remember from the very early years of the program. Brian is a stand-up comedian, and he very much loved coming onto the show, and Rogan clearly liked him due to his numerous appearances at the time. As time went on, Brian used the show more and more to highlight himself and his comedic standing, even at the end of one podcast segueing from a topic to talk about a review he got during a comedy show. Clearly, he was trying to make everything about him, and Rogan caught him doing that one too many times. Really, I know this shit. Start it now. Well, I have to go to Australia, for, you know, that, oh, I'm okay. going to be out of the country. When you go so he called him out on it, and they argued about it over several episodes. So thus, he eventually wasn't let back on. Number seven, Jamie Kilstein. Kind of becomes my thing, so I go on your show. We argue about it because I'm like, I don't have comic friends anymore. This one almost hurts to talk about because of how bad this person wanted to make his case, and Joe Rogan, among others, just wasn't having it. This all started with a joke that Jamie had done during a sketch about assaulting women. Um, and I didn't hear all about the rape joke. Like, I just heard all the whole Daniel Tosh story I heard. Not that he was doing it, to be clear, but he was making a joke about the topic, and Joe wasn't amused one bit, though he did try and give him a chance to clear up the joke and reveal his motivations for it. And he goes, look, he goes, I don't have any material. I'm not even supposed to be up here. So what do you guys want to talk about? Jamie noted that it wasn't meant to showcase certain things and even stated that being murdered is better than having to go through that assault. Hearing that, Joe lost it and called him crazy because you can get help and heal from an assault, whereas death is death. And while we can't confirm this, we highly doubt that Jamie Kilstein asked a bunch of women what their thoughts were on that joke. Call it a hunch. Number six, Brian Callen. Two of Joe's favorite guests that he likes to have on repeatedly are the former Ultimate Fighter champ Brendan Schaub and also Brian Callen. One time, Brian went off on Schaub because Brian claimed he had been bullied for a year and he wasn't going to take any more crap from people anymore, and he tried to get into it with Schaub, but Rogan wasn't having any of it. He called out Callen for his tough guy attitude that was clearly a facade and noted that it wasn't their fault that he let people talk to him for so long a certain way. He's not wrong here. If someone is bullying you, you need to stop it in one form or another another, stewing for a year and then calling someone out for it? That's not smart at all. Number 5. Adam Conover. The transgender issue is one that is still very much a hot topic. Many in the US are feeling the heat of this topic in a variety of ways, and a variety of laws are being made to try and stop transgenders from having various rights, operations, and so on. Joe Rogan brought on comedian and TV host Adam Conover to discuss the issue, and Adam made his thoughts clear when he noted that there should be genetic confirmation and hormone therapy for those kids who don't know who they are. But Joe was very quick to point out issues with that philosophy, mainly that this puts all the power in the parents' hands, and once this therapy is had, it can't be reversed. Plus, the suicide rate for transgender people is still incredibly high, both pre-op and post-op, because the people feel horrified at what will be done to them or what happens to them. This is another one where it's good to know that Joe Rogan was on the right side of things, but in truth, you would like it more if he was more consistent on issues that matter. Number 4. Joey Diaz 
This is a case where the guests lost their cool more than Joe Rogan did. Joey Diaz is a comedian, actor, and podcast host, and he also is a Cuban-American. Because of how he was raised and where he was raised, he finds himself in a tricky position in terms of how he talks and the words he uses. He grew up using language and slang that in today's world is deemed inappropriate by many. While talking with Joe about political correctness, he went into a tirade about how he doesn't care about it and he won't change his ways because he's too old and the knowledge is ingrained in his brain. Even noting that an album he had coming out had a name that wasn't acceptable and that he didn't name it, so take it up with him, in regards to the person who did name it. Joe understood his position and didn't push it too far, but he likely was also going to be careful to ensure that a series of inappropriate words didn't appear on his podcast, so make of that what you will. Number 3. Nick DiPaolo As Joe Rogan has sadly proven time and time again, he's not afraid to get political for better and usually for worse. But let's show you a time when he actually took the right side of a major matter. During the 2016 election season, Joe had Nick DiPaolo, a comedian and actor, on the show, and asked whether Trump was honestly a bigger liar than Hillary Clinton. DiPaolo stated that it was just the media hating Trump, and tried to spin things to make it clear that Trump was the better candidate. Joe Rogan fired back though, stating that DiPaolo was doing whataboutism, or a way of deflecting blame by stating the faults of others versus actually answering the question, which as we would find out was a huge part of the Trump campaign, as well as his supporters using it to prop up their candidate, and is now used by many to deflect issues. To be clear, Joe was in the right for calling him out for this, but Rogan's own political views have gotten a bit muddier over time, including praising people who are doing the same thing that Trump did, which as we just showed you, was something Rogan chastised at the time. Food for thought. Number 2. Candace Owens Global warming The debate on this topic is basically never ending, even though it shouldn't be much of a debate at all. That's politics and greed for you. When Joe Rogan had political activist Candace Owens on his podcast, she noted that she didn't believe in global warming, which would have been enough to set Joe off. But then she noted she wasn't, quote, informed on the subject, and just didn't believe in it outright. Rogan went to town on her, and noted that she shouldn't voice an opinion like that if she wasn't well read on it, and cited how just about 100% of scientists in the world today believe in global warming, and that's not nothing, especially in the world today. Owens definitely got owned here, and we should praise Rogan for that. Number 1. Mark Gordon and Brian Dunning One time he invited on Dr. Mark Gordon to the show, and Gordon started talking about a miracle supplement that would help people not get drunk. At first, Joe laughed it off and said it was bull, though he admitted to not being a medical professional. As such, he basically gave his blessing for the supplement. This led to another medical doctor, Brian Dunning, coming onto the show to chew out Joe for not standing up to Gordon and calling him a liar. And as Dunning made his case, it was clear just how bad the goof Rogan did was. Because while it's true that he's not a medical professional, he still has a thing called common sense. He should have known that any miracle supplement that isn't widely known about is likely snake oil. He got caught with his hands in the cookie jar there, and he paid for it. And there you have it, everyone. A look at the various times when Joe Rogan went off on his guests, or his guests got him to get very angry for one reason or another. Which of these do you remember watching and being shocked that things went the way they did? Do you feel that there are even better examples of Rogan going off than these ones? What are they, if so? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.